Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello there. Welcome to our Coffee Break. Look who we have joining us today, Liz Jefferis, the Executive Director of Baypath and an organization we know and love here in Hopkinton. Yeah. Thank you Thank for being you. with us Thanks today. And we're Absolutely. marching into March. Mm -hmm. Marching yeah. into March. Yeah. Marching Absolutely. into March. So, you know, there's so many animal lovers, I mean, everywhere, and certainly in Hopkinton. Everybody has a dog, and everyone loves dogs, and, and adoption. I have a big dog. Pet, ado uh, <laughs> pet adoption uh -huh. is huge. So tell us, we're so happy to get to know you and more about the organization. Yeah, well, thank you guys again. Thank you for having me. And again, I want to seriously thank you guys for the Real Housewives platform so that we can talk about the different events and the work we do and animals in need. Um, but yeah, so Bay Path, just real quick, just a quick little yes. thing. We're celebrating our 40th year. Wow. Uh, yeah. Which is a huge milestone. It is. It, it is. is. It's a big deal. And it started in this old, um, some of the, you know, women that, you know, Claire Wright, Sally Almy, like that got this going mm. 40 years ago were responding to the need to help it started as it was actually Hawkington Humane Society mm -hmm. okay. um, for over to like about 13 years I think it was and at the time I mean this really was happening I have like Claire shared like our Boston Globe articles that um, when there were stray animals and there were a lot more I know we don't have as many now because people are really good about it mm -hmm. but um, the animal control officer would hold them for like I don't know whatever it was just a couple of days and would sell them to laboratories. <gasps> mm -hmm. Oh wow! And it's you know well, it's a real was customary yeah. back then yeah. within yeah. within our own community. That so was like happening. five or ten. Yeah. So and that's why the women got together and um, started. You know, they. I mean, Claire yeah. has these um, videos of the dogs were kept at um, basically where the fruit street fields are now. Mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in like a tar whatever is a sand pit gravel pit and then the cats they got a trailer over by Ashland oh where the cats goodness. were kept and they did an excellent job and then you know they finally got the shelter on Rafferty now Legacy Farms um, like 10 years later and we remain there to this day uh, what anyone who's been down there you know knows it's small it's tight it's old um, and we don't own the property it's it's an ever source property mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not, um, they, they don't bother us, but it's not like a long-term, uh, you know, with the LNG plant there, um, mm -hmm. it's not a long-term solution. So that's what, you know, we've been doing in the past couple of years, and you guys have been very supportive, um, changing the zoning bylaws in the town mm. um, to allow for a, a shelter to be, because, I mean, you could ostensibly win the Powerball and buy mm -hmm. a piece of land, and yeah. it wasn't, you couldn't, you it couldn't do it. You couldn't right. do it. Ah. So. so we went through in the planning committee and the zoning committee and town meeting, and again, you know, Darlene was up at the mic this year for us, and, you know, we really appreciate it. And then okay. this, the zoning was two years ago. This year, we had that article that the selectmen were great about supporting um, a 50-year uh, lease on Fruit Street for a shelter. Mm -hmm. um, so we're uh, that provides animal control services, which right. we also do for this town. And you're you actually know, the assistant animal control officer, aren't you? Or I am the animal inspector now. Animal so wow. that deal, that's, um, you know, dog bites and livestock, which has been kind of fun getting to know people in town. I mean, I love animals, so yeah. that's been a great thing. And we house for Hopkinton Animal Control. And it's not a lot of dogs. You know, you've, you guys have let us yeah. post, like, the Akita that we found dumped yeah. up at the top of the street that actually got adopted in Hopkinton. But mm -hmm. it's also just being a service for, like, people, who, if they pick up a stray dog, uh, not a, you know, someone's dog right. that's loose, they may claim it, like, an hour later, but at least they have a place to bring them and so yeah. that they're not, you know, just just roaming around, around you know, right. stuff like that. Right. So we're happy to So when the police find, that. like, a stray dog, yeah. they bring it to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah. and, and you are a no-kill shelter, correct? Well, it's, uh, I'm glad you asked that because we actually, we took that word, that, you know, no-kill out of our mission, okay. but we did not change our philosophy at all. Like, no-kills become kind of like, you know, some people think that, you know, that means that you, we don't euthanize anything. And we're very upfront about um, our, how we do what we do. We, we don't euthanize for time and space. If there is, um, a, you know, a critical uh, a medical issue yes. and an animal is yes. really right, suffering. Right, right, right. I oh, mean, yeah. right. we do a lot yes. of medical, and I will show you the financials to yeah. prove it. We're not, it's not like, oh, you, you know. But if an animal's aggressive, things yeah, like and that. It, yes. So if an animal has, like, something that, that can't be treated 
uh, medically, but, right. you know, we'll, we'll do right. anything we but can, but not, also it, but it's not aggression, a, yes. You know, there are Just shelters. to make yes. space. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we adopt, we've adopted out uh, animals, cat, cats, as well, you know, that bite. Um, but there's a lot of things that go into that. We work with uh, behaviorists and trainers, and it's about the, you know, the severity of the bite, the size of the dog. You know, little chihuahuas, they can get, a, they get away with more. Mm -hmm. um, the <laughs> triggers, if you know why they're biting. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if, they, if you just took a rack of lamb out of their mouth while they're eating and they snapped and they grazed you, well, that's manageable. You may not put them in a home. You're not, right. not going to put them in a home right. with a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get, you're going to put them in a home with someone who's willing to, you know, work on the behavior but it's not black and white but no right. we we, we have a responsibility understand. to the people who are coming to us and bringing these animals back out in society to, to I, put mean, I think you put up like a good description too when you do when you have an yeah. animal and it's yeah. like you know here's bingo. <laughs> bingo. <laughs> bingo I like that name bingo cannot be with children and you know hates brown dogs yeah you know but <laughs> like you know you know but you know, but I you, know you, bingo <laughs> <laughs> yes yes but I mean, yeah. but, bingo. But I mean you, you're trying to be upfront with people yes. let them know yeah. so you assess their and you get and you get people that we, we have people that you know say especially with kids that it's like oh it's so hard to die you know mm -hmm. and I know shelters have that stigma but you know we also we don't want anyone to get hurt I mean animals right. bite I right mean, right they do and it and doesn't mean they're all cujo right yeah 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 that's right. Two can bite you. But, the, but, 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 hold on. Yeah. but yeah but I mean yeah. you also have to protect your own interests you have staff you yes. have volunteers yes. that yeah. come in you want them safe too you don't want an aggressive dog or Absolutely. Yeah. There, yep. There's probably an aggressive cat here or there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you oh, got really? that right. Yeah, there <laughs> yeah. is. There so is. are there other animals outside of dogs and cats you take in? Just, well, with our space now, I mean, if we get a new shelter, well, goats, no, I don't know. But, <laughs> no, cats and dogs when you get for a new us. Shelter. Yeah, when, I like that, yes, when we get a new shelter, you never know. But right now it's, you know, it's cats and dogs. And the other thing is, um, you know, we have about 120 volunteers in and out in, in a week, um, you know, including our, one of my one of our favorite is Michael Listnow Center. They come every Wednesday. Oh. They're one of the best groups. Oh. oh my God, they're so much fun. Wow. They just come and they just it, the kids just some of them go to the cat room. Some of them like do build Kongs and I know, they just play with the animals. I didn't animals. even know there was a cat room. My son's girlfriend yeah. goes every Friday to volunteer from oh, like good. four to like six thirty. Yeah, yeah. Play with, well, just and, to play with cats. And, and that's wow. what Emerson did. He went to play with. And yeah. We do a training though. Yes. Yeah. And and then you can. Yeah, we do a training and because again because of our spatial constraints we can't, um, you know people will always ask about small children or, or even young teenagers and for us part of our uh, problem is we have such a tight space and we do hold the, you know, the Akita that the you know the Serenity House called us about the scared giant Akita. That dumped up at the top of Legacy Farms. This was a couple mm. months ago. Well, that dog, you know, we don't have a special area. Anyone who's been to the shelter knows. You, you're walking these tight little halls with these unknown animals, and um, mm -hmm. by and large, they turn out to be great. But you also have to understand, like, that dog had just given birth. I mean, she was terrified. Oh, terrified. Wow. Mm -hmm. she, you oh, know, and her puppies, baby. and this happens, you know, where they're dumped, and the puppies were nowhere to be found because we assume they were sold, you know, okay. sold, yeah. and they dumped the mom. And we've oh, had that geez. up at the top of that street more than once. Usually it's pit bulls, and um, they're terrified. And so mm -hmm. you got to think about, like, kids that don't necessarily can't read yeah. the body language and right. can't understand, you know. And we just right. want to keep people safe. Right. But when we get that new shelter, yeah. part of our long-term strategic vision is to have, like, an, uh, uh, an educational space, a space where we can – you know, control the flow, like we can bring in some the, the animals that we know ki animals, kids can interact right, yeah. with. Because, I mean, that's, it's huge. And but have more um, space is going to yeah. be better. For, let, let's switch gears just a little bit. We're going to continue talking about Bay Path. Yeah. Of course, but now we want to talk. Let, I'm not that know you. Yes, you, yes, you are. are. Yes, you are. <laughs> so how long have you been the executive director? Well, I started, I started um, there, like, winter of 2011. Okay. So, um, wow, time flies. Six years-ish, and so I... Um, got the promotion. The executive director role didn't exist. Uh, mm -hmm. I asked for it. Yeah. Well, because I started, we started doing more with, um, you know, development and the stuff with the town. And, um, you know, I started taking on these additional roles. And, I, you know, it was more, you know. What did you come in doing, if not ED? Uh, this is manager, the okay. shelter manager. Right, yeah. right, right. And I was in finance before that. I was going to so. say, so how about, what, oh. tell us a little bit about your so you career path. Contract, so you didn't go to school for I went to <laughs> did not major in animal shop. <laughs> I uh, what, I majored in economics, yeah, and you, you know I worked at State Street, and then I worked for like a third party, uh, 
money manager and mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. So, um, but I was I had started volunteering at PayPal a few months earlier, and it was always like a dream. I had lived in in my twenties like a knucklehead. I lived in Florida. I lived in um, actually. What is wrong I was with that? Because everyone thinks like. Did you live in Miami? I'm like, Boca and Naples, which are not like where it's <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, we the elderly, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. But, you but, had actually, but you had dinner at 3.30. I did. I had dinner at 3.30, and that's yeah, where I got involved. I got started at Naples yeah. Humane Society and got started volunteering there, and I also started doing hospice down there, which I do wow. up here now. I actually oh, you do? do uh, Golden Pond. I have my little buddy over there. and oh. so. Um, yeah. But that's where I got, you know, the volunteer, like, the spirit uh, of the spirit. You know, yeah, just volunteering. Doing, you know, yeah. so, having a little more purpose. And so, you obviously loved animals your whole life. You'd yeah. have to. Yes, yeah. yes. Wow. And you're, you're a Massachusetts native. Yep, I grew up in Northboro. And yeah. when I lived in Florida and then Colorado. I lived in Denver for a little bit, volunteered at a shelter out there. And it was like, you know, it was a, my destiny. Yeah, you, was. you know what's so you're, funny is I... So do you live in town now? I, I live in Upton. Uh -huh. So yeah. you're close when they have to call you for like yeah. a, an animal inspection. Yeah, yeah. yep. Yep, absolutely. So I work with, you know, Bill Proctor a lot. You yeah. know, we don't, you know. So you're about to say. Oh, no, I was just going to, one time when I flew back from Denver, it was uh, basically the same thing your son did to you. I was like, Mom, you know, I was just dropping in for a weekend. I'm like, Mom, this house, like, there's not, there's not, there's no, you can't nothing four-footed or three-footed here. Like, we need to go get something. <laughs> and we came into Bay Path. And it was like seven years later that I ended up working there. But I remember driving up Rafferty and, yeah. You know, I'd been to Hopkins and maybe a couple times, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just remember looking at that place. And I was like, this is kind of cool. Oh, and yeah. then I just went back to Colorado. And yeah. then, you know, here. Yeah, right. yeah. my son but, did Yeah, that same too. thing, right? Well, we, <laughs> I, listen. I've always had a dog. And when the last dog passed away, I had, well, I had been always the one bringing the dog into the family. So I deferred that mm. um, to uh, my children's father. And my kids were like, Mom. Yeah. He's never going to do it. So, yeah. so <laughs> I gave him, I was like, no, no, no. And he's literally dragging me to Bay Path, dragging me to yeah. Bay Path, and finally, like, okay. And my dog that I have now. Was, How old was he? Oh, my son. No, no. your beagle. Oh, oh my beagle. He was just from <laughs> college, right? Yep. You said, he, oh, so, she, I'm sorry. She, no, she, no, she, no. She, she. Oh, my little girl. So I've uh -oh. had her over five years. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, we think she was either one and a half or three, but as she's showing a lot of gray, we think she's yeah. probably three. Uh, or she was three when I died. So yep. we think she's eight-ish going oh, on okay, nine. Cool. She's a cute little girl. She's a little beagle. Yeah. Um, yeah. But love Bay Path. And I've always had dogs that have come from the shelter. Oh, I've right. never... There's no, and, and you guys do a great job. Absolutely. I mean, it's so easy. We'll you try. Can, you identify... A lot about the animals and their personality types. And, yeah, and we try. We don't always get you know. We you know we don't always get it right. We're just human. Well, Sometimes you ever we get dogs die. returned? We, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot they less because we really work hard on the matching. To do and, the matching. And you know, I, I I always joke as a shelter that I, I what I I also lived in Cambridge <laughs> when I was uh, in my early twenties. I really got around. Um, but I tried to adopt a dog from a Massachusetts shelter, and I joke with them because now. Very friendly with them, and but they denied me because I I wanted, you know, a husky. I lived in an apartment. Yeah, I, they're um, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't wasn't I was in between jobs, but you know I knew me. I knew what I was gonna, yeah. you know, yeah. how you would they, care for him. They they said no, and then I, I I joke with them because actually my dog, I I went in the newspaper because I grew up with a golden retriever. I went in the newspaper. Right. Mm -hmm. I found a golden retriever. It was five hundred, you know, five hundred dollars or whatever up in Tingsboro. I went and got her. I, uh, she turned 13 yesterday. I oh. moved with her to Denver and yeah. to Florida oh. and in and out of relationships. And, <laughs> she's been and, there the and whole she's way. she's been there. And I always joke with them, like, you know. And, and I always try to, like, keep that in mind, too, because I rem I was judged. And I don't blame, you know, it's yeah. hard, You know, when you're looking at a 20, you know, a person job, in an apartment. You right. live in a high rise in yeah. Cambridge. Like, get out of here. You know, so I try <laughs> yeah. to remember, you know, we yeah. try to have that perspective. But yeah, you know, we get it. We don't get it right. We upset people, but we try to. You know, we try, it's not like it's well. And when you a get yes a dog, no, a fit. you go through a lot of things. So all the dogs are neutered. Yes. At, you know, when you adopt a dog from Bay Path, mm. if they haven't been prior to that, they are spayed or neutered. Yes. Prior to you adopting, yep. mm -hmm. so you incur between the physicals. There's a lot of medical. A lot of costs. You do, and some of these dogs. I mean, some of them are so sick, and yeah. you yep. know, and there's some. Unfortunately, because they've been either abused or neglected, or mm -hmm. you know, so. 
Well, here's yeah. a question. So, Talk someone who, with, um, so everyone knows I, I um, don't have a dog. What? I don't have a dog. I haven't had a dog in my adult life. But we did. I, I know. <laughs> but I grew up with dogs. I mean, as a family, and yeah. we always got shelter dogs. Yeah. I mean, in fact, I never even heard of people going to breeders. That yeah. just seems so like over the top. You just got. You went yeah. to the shelter, and you got you got a good dog. But for someone who doesn't have a dog, hasn't been around. How, you know, um, do, are there any dogs here who are, are already trained? I mean, that's the biggest hurdle for someone yeah. like me is the idea oh, of house potty training. training. How's yeah. training a dog? Yeah. Absolutely. I, there's so many do I mean, the, you know, a lot of them, like, we, we're there 10 hours a day, but, you know, we got to go home. So they're there overnight, 14 hours, and most of the, you know, they're in runs. Right. And we put a towel on one side, so as they have yeah. to go. But so many of them can hold it for four. I mean, it's not ideal, yeah, right. but it's better than... Yeah, being like, in, but you've got there's some training going yeah. on. And on so they, they, yeah. they get they you see how quickly it's it's not the ideal routine, right? You know, 14 hours, but they pick up on a routine. Yeah. And then we take we've had some breeder uh, dogs mm -hmm. come through, uh, like retired breeders yeah. that you know were a means to an end for a long time, and they lived this certain life, and they didn't get the potty training. Um, and so you're t these people are taking in these nine, ten-year-old dogs that have no body training, and, Ooh, and they, they figure it out yeah. too. So you can teach an old dog. Oh, well, maybe tricks, I have to rethink the notion. Yeah. Well, and, and, it, and, it, and it is it's, it is interesting because you know certain dogs are also better at it than other yes. dogs. Yeah, the little ones, uh -huh. are, they take a little while. Yeah, yeah. So as we talked about, like you've got costs with yes. medical, you've got costs that eventually you're moving. Yeah. You're going to get a shovel to the ground. And you do an annual event yes. that's yes. coming up. And so let's focus on what's coming up. Yes, thank okay. you. Um, on March 24th at the Sheridan Framingham, we have a, um, uh, a f it's, f our, it's our sixth furball, but it's our 40, because of the 40th anniversary furball. I love the name furball. furball. Yeah, yeah you know, perfect. Of course, it's going to be something not, <laughs> you know, ridiculous. But um, f uh, our 40th anniversary furball gala, um, we... Uh, it's a, an event that just, you know, continues to grow. We, we've moved the venue a couple times as, the, you know, as it's continued to grow. But, um, yeah, it's at the Sheridan Framingham. We have uh, three, th we're hoping for around 350 people. Um, Ooh, party. Yeah, we're going to be there. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on the playlist. Um, we have Doug Meehan from Channel 5, Big Animal Lover. He's going to okay. be our MC. A lot of auction items. And, oh, my God, there's so many people. Are and he just does like, the 6 o'clock news, doesn't he, on Channel 5? Yeah, I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He does the I remember from when he was in, up in the helicopter. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So he's going to be there, but yep. but your big event. Yeah, so you know, dance, you know, dancing and auction items, and we're getting like a red carpet, and Ooh. we're doing photo. We're getting like one of those like little photo step booth? and repeat oh. things, oh, right? Red carpet. Yeah, and a photo, photo booth. booth. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, you know what? So it's just fun. like listen. It's fun. It's the end yeah. of March in New England. Right. Everyone's like, God, get yeah. me out of the house. And it, you know, it's a fun event. You know, we have our 5K and we have a golf tournament. But this is really, I have to take credit for this idea. This is the idea that right. I was. Well. I'm like, I don't run, I don't play golf. Can we have an event where we could just, Party. you know, yeah. dress up and have right. fun? Just dress up and have fun and just raise money. That that's so critical. I mean, all these uh, these events sure you guys know you know i know you've been in event planning it's they're monsters it's your to thing, plan really. yeah they're huge yeah. oh they're very the, hard um, <gasps> no. you know you, this has been a very successful event for you though in the past yeah, and yeah. you know i think hitting a milestone one i mean yeah. you've got i've i've noticed already some of the publicity you've got some really good sponsors yeah. you've got yeah. you've got board members buying tables and yes. i think that's that yeah. makes a difference where you'd have that kind of support yeah and a lot of community support for it yes mm -hmm. um I do draw people from like outside. Yeah, yeah, and that's why you know when I'm looking like when we look for auction items. I mean, so many of the businesses in town and the neighboring towns are super generous. But you know, yesterday I'm like, uh, like, you know, Okim. I get tickets to Okimo. You know, like, uh, um, you know, Keurig is great. Green Mountain Keurig sounds like coffee. You know, just uh, things sure. for ev for everyone. American right. Girl oh, doll. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's a free for all. No. But, you know, it's all, like, it's all for a good cause, you know. It's yeah. not, it's, and, you know, it all helps. A lot of the t businesses in town are great about, you know, gifts or gift cards and, and just stuff. It all adds up, you know. It all and if up. people yeah. wanted to get tickets, how do they do it? Right on our website, um, um We'll pop it we'll up. We'll put just that up, like, yep. Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> you just click on it, and, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know. And but what is your annual budget? What do it's, you around, it's around 700 Eight hundred, you know, it, it continues Jesus to well, yeah. grow <clears throat> rapidly. Well, again, you have 
massive uh, expenses. Right. When you think about yeah. housing, feeding, the vet care, yeah. plus you have staff to pay for, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's, you know, you do How a lot of your staff? Oh, How many employees? I know yeah, that, yeah, we have um, five full-time and three mm -hmm. part-time, and we do about 1,100 animals a year. And, wow. you know, Oodles I'm not, volunteers, yeah. that's a lot, you know, I, I work or talk to a lot of other shelters, and for, our, for that staff number, the, uh, the, um, the number of d uh, animals we serve, it, it, it's ratio. very, yeah, yeah. it's, it's very, uh, not to toot our, not to throw my shoulder, it's, it's impressive, and yeah. uh, that's a testament to the staff. I mean, now I do largely, you know, do you do a lot of the grant town, writing? you know, grants, um, the, you know, work with, I mean, I have board members of committees that help right. producing the annual report, producing the appeals, the events, all the development stuff, so the rest of the staff is there working day in and day out, and the fosters, you know, many of mm, which are in this yeah. um, community. neighboring community, you have like 150 fosters. I mean, they're not all right. active, yeah. you know, but they're yeah. ready. They have different, a lot of cat and kitten, a lot of dog. We always need more. <laughs> I, I um, know that, yeah, you know, we I couldn't I, do it without this community. I mean, we just. When I've talked to people mm -hmm. like, and you'd say, you're, and I'm not, if I'm not in Hopton, if I'm in Boston or in Worcester or doing an mm -hmm. event, working an event, and I say where I'm from. Oh, I know that because we got our dog at Bay, Bay Path. Path. Yeah. And so it comes, it, honestly, it probably comes up about once a month. We'll say, oh, I got oh. my dog at Bay Path. And I'm like, oh, okay, Are they happy? <laughs> for the most <laughs> part, yeah. yeah. For yeah. the most yeah. part, yes. I mean, yeah, but, you know, I've right. heard stories yes. and stuff. Sure. And I've been, you know, one of the other <laughs> stories. But the, um, but you guys, for the most part, do awesome. I mean, it's, yeah. been, it's been a, a staple great. in the community. Absolutely. Do you, and as we go into the furball, you're doing your 40th. When do you think you'll have a shovel to the ground over on Bruce Street? Well, we're, you know, the town has been awesome. Like uh, the, the selectmen, the administrators, Norman, Elaine, you know, everyone's been great. So, you know, there's some work because the Boy Scouts, you know, we had that right, article yeah. go through with the Boy Scouts and the town is working. You know, they, uh, as I understand, they have to do some stuff with the, the land itself, um, which they literally need the ground to thaw. And so there's all yeah. the, there's these steps. Um, but, you know, we're hoping two to three years, you know, we have a capital campaign consultant that we're ready to work with. Mm -hmm. We've already kind of been talking to architects and, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're going to, we'll have to run a capital campaign. We have to raise yeah, money. Yeah, you've got to raise some money. good yeah. money. Find yeah. some money somewhere, yep. but. Yeah, find some money, come to the fur ball, yeah. <laughs> give some money, yeah. get a Keurig. <laughs> <laughs> Learn how you can adopt a dog Take or a cat. Take a puppy home. Exactly. Yeah. 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 dance floor. We got yeah. every, you know, yeah. Frank Sinatra to Spice Girls. It's just, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. fun. It's fun, right? Yeah. Oh, how It's a little bit of everything, so. That's so great. So do you bring your dog to work? No, I I, get, I largely work from home um, mm -hmm. because we just don't have uh, Off the the, space we don't have there. the space. Yeah. We just actually Eagle Leasing donated a trailer to us. Um, the fabulous! I just emailed them once, and Mark Eagle was like, "Here you go." Mm -hmm. And we're waiting for again the ground to thaw run electricity, and it's a it's basically an office unit and a mm -hmm. storage unit. It's one of you know the trailers you see at construction sites, mm -hmm. and that's. Not even for that's for the staff that's in that lobby. They don't even have enough space. That's now, funny. So I used they to can go I used to do an outside venue for about a decade, and the, my office was brought up like one of those. It was better than most of the offices I've ever awesome? been in. Right. I mean, between <laughs> the climate control office. Yes. Everything was Wi-Fi. I was like, my God, I yes. want this. <laughs> yeah. I love it. A trailer. <laughs> well, exactly. yeah, that was, yeah. It's better than my home office. It was yeah. better than my office yeah. at work, and I was like. Wow, I have to sell it for one month, but this is pretty cool every year. Yeah, <laughs> everything's right there. They little, it came with a little AC, little baseboard. It's right Little refrigerators home. are built in the, yeah. Oh, it's we didn't the, get a refrigerator. No. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what's the um, uh, average tenure of some of your animals? I mean, how, you know, you, how long do they? Yeah, that are, um, we actually, yeah, we should, like length, the length of stay. Um, for the dogs, it's usually, you know, two to, th but of course, you know, you can have, um, for all you math majors out there, you know, you can have a, a, a long-term animal that yes. is, uh, excuse the statistics, but it, let me say this, like dogs about two to three weeks, cats maybe th three to four, a couple things. We don't keep a dog or a cat in our shelter for more than a couple weeks. And that, what that means is that's what our foster program is for. We are not Best Friends Utah. You know, we are not a sanctuary. Okay. Animals do, should not live. Oh, that's our contention. We are not set up. We know what we're good at. We are not a place that you, you live as an animal. So that's why, you, mm -hmm. you know, you go into these foster homes. And, you know, a lot of people that I know be like, oh, they've been in foster for so long. Well, they don't know they're in foster. They're right. not like, oh, you know, this is just a temporary. They're like, I'm in a home and I'm happy. They don't, right. They, don't, they, they, didn't yeah. they didn't they're get their like, tuition you know, voucher. Where am I <laughs> getting my real home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. to be in they're a in home. That, right. And also, like, we also do a lot of foster to adopt, which is yep. – um, 
you know, they, they apply and they are a good home, then take the animal, tr you know, it's a trial. You want to make sure they're serious because, you know, you don't want to just yeah. have dogs and cats right. fling right, out right, and right. Going, but they're serious. Don't worry about the adoption fee. Take them, give it a try. If it doesn't work, we get more information. Now we know that they don't like brown dogs or, you know, or right. whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's information and it's a shot and it almost always works out. And there's something about, I think, psychologically, people are like, okay, I'm not... Even though they sign a foster contract, it's not an oh, adoption not con. Yeah. So they don't. They feel like, okay, yeah. I can try this, and, and mm -hmm. there is because people take the commitment seriously. So I'm not, you know. It's the well, it becomes a family member. Right. They, they have sure. to look at it that right. way, and right. they're also vesting in it. They have to get animal shots. They have to take yeah. care of it. So yeah. if they're not going to, right, uh, and right. realize like, wait a second, works. I didn't know that this thing had to go out four times a day. And wait a second, right. yeah. I had to feed it. I thought it was just going to sit next to me on the couch and pat it. Well, it, but you that's guys. what build a bear's for. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, exactly. <laughs> but uh, you know, you guys are, are amazing. Though. Oh well, and thank you, and you guys. Let's just great close out service. one more time with saying yeah. okay. your website okay, and the you. date of the furball. Yes, thank you. So it's uh, the furball is March twenty fourth at the Sharon in Framingham, um, and the website is www.baypathhumane.org. And it's you know it says red or black tie optional. We're trying to make it fun, but anything goes. We're just yeah. trying to help animals. I was looking up. Vintage 80s prom gowns last night, so oh, I don't know what I'm eating. Snapchat. I have no idea what's going to happen next, but I went, thank you. I, I went to a Roaring Twenties event last night. That Did was you? Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's just fun. It's fun for animals. And again, thank you guys for thank the you. opportunity. Cheers. And thank you for your social media platform, you which has well, um, made thank, a world of difference. Thank, thank you for being all here. you do. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Liz. Thanks thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org.